And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. And yes, you guessed it, we're always working on your financial freedom. I'm Mike Harrison, and it's my privilege to be joining you today. And if, as always, if you miss any parts of this show, you can find us on your favorite podcast app. Please subscribe to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. And if you like this show, if you like the information in it, please do me a favor. Click on that share button and send it to a friend and somebody that may find this show informative and interesting. And I do appreciate the emails. My email address is askmike at l-u-i-n-c dot com. I'm here to help. What's holding you back? Send me an email and I will respond personally to those emails. Now today I'm going to go into real estate strategies. And I know you can't see me, but I am holding my fingers up for the air quotes around real estate strategies. Obviously, there's a couple of specific strategies we teach here at Lifestyles Unlimited to buy your life back. Two strategies that we believe in wholeheartedly because they we know they work. But I'm sharing this show because I know not everybody is a Lifestyles Unlimited member. But often when folks find out that I'm a real estate investor, they say, oh, yeah, my father's a real estate investor. And, and here's what he does. And Maybe it's real estate investing, maybe it's not, but I'm going to share these common strategies that a lot of people out there, uh, again, believe are real estate investing. And we're going to go through the, the pros and cons of each and, and break them down and, and see what really is involved in some of these quote unquote strategies. So people who decide to dip their toe in real estate investing, they'll often go online They'll do research, they'll ask other people, and then they'll decide, decide what works for them. And, and maybe they engage in one, two, three, or, or all five of these that I'm going to share today. And again, at Lifestyles Unlimited, we teach, we have a couple of very specific primary strategies we teach. So these aren't necessarily endorsed by Lifestyles Unlimited, but I do want to go through them because it's, it's common knowledge for folks to get into some of this stuff and, and believe that they're real estate investors. And, and we'll decide. We'll look at each of these and, and see what, uh, what really is real estate investing and what may not be real estate investing once you do a deep dive and, and go into it. And, and these are my opinions. Uh, who am I? Well, my opinion's based on 13 years of my own real estate investing. And I do continue to grow my portfolio today. In fact, I'm looking to uh, invest some money uh, into some real estate here within the next uh, few months. So stay tuned. Uh, once I decide what I'm going to do, I'm always happy to, to share that with you. Now, as I hinted at earlier, spoiler alert, a couple of these quote unquote strategies, I personally don't even consider them real estate investing at all. And, and it's my opinion. Uh, folks may debate me uh, again, with uh, how they feel, and that's that's perfectly fine, right? I'm open. My email address is askmike at l u i n c dot com, and but again, th this is all based on my personal knowledge, my personal experience, and in my personal education. But there are folks that will claim uh, these are tried and true real estate investing. Again, you can go online and, and type in real estate investing strategies, and, and these strategies we're going to talk, talk about will pop up. They will populate, and folks will read it that uh, may or may not be totally informed, and they'll go, oh, yeah, that's that's uh, real estate investing. So I want to go through this, and, and hopefully you can choose uh, what works best for you. Uh, and again, when we get a couple of, of these uh, that are, are proven uh, strategies that we utilize here at Lifestyles Unlimited that we teach at Lifestyles Unlimited. I'll, I'll call those uh, out to you. Now, before we get to that, um, why invest in real estate? Why would someone want to invest in real estate? And let's go through each and, and every one of those reasons. For starters, um, I think some people out there uh, will invest in real estate because they may have a heavy stock mutual fund 
uh, portfolio and they say, hey, uh, I want to diversify. I want to do something different than buying paper and, and stocks and bonds and, and all that stuff. Uh, so many people will dive into real estate just for that particular reason. Uh, other folks may be looking to create passive income right? Passive income is a recognized term. It's, it's actually one of the three types of income that the IRS considers income. There's passive income, there's W-2 income, which is wage income, right? That's what uh, most people do. Uh, they have a job and they get paid and you get a W-2. So they call that W-2 income or, or wage income. And then there's portfolio income. So some folks uh, may say, hey, I want passive income. And the, the easiest way, my opinion, is through real estate investing. Why would someone invest in real estate? There's a lot of different reasons. Um, uh, family friends of ours um, purchased a property for no other reason than appreciation. I mean, they didn't even know that there's five ways to make money in real estate. They just uh, said, hey, we're going to buy this property. Uh, it, we're going to rent it out. And one day it's going to be worth more than we paid for it. And, and so it was really just a, a buy and hold. But they're banking on the appreciation. And they understand appreciation because they're historical um, conventional wisdom world folks that uh, you learn appreciation through stock investing, right? If the only way, well, not the only way, but one of the primary rate ways to make money in stocks and bonds and mutual funds is you buy for X and you're told, hang on to those. And one day they'll be worth more than you paid for it. Uh, well, they were applying that same principle to this property. Um, look, these folks weren't even breaking even. They were losing a little bit of money each month, but they were they were okay with that because it was just a small amount, a few hundred bucks each month. But they figured over time, uh, with the reasoning that the house could could easily double in value. So uh, they were banking on uh, somewhere around a, a 10% annualized return. And I come up with that uh, because typically, uh, historically, homes will double in value over 10 years. Right? That if you go back and you look. Uh, throughout uh, on a timeline, real estate in the United States, uh, typically on average, right? Real estate is local, okay? Uh, this is a gamble, my opinion. So I'm, I'm not saying to, to try this by any means, but the, the whole thought is, is okay, you buy a house for $200,000, you add 10 years to that, the home's worth 400000 that's a $200,000 profit and you divide that by the 10 years. So in, in their opinion, in their mind, they were going to make a 10% a annualized return. Now, other people uh, that invest in real estate, these are the type of people that only invest in tangible assets. Okay. These are the types that buy precious metal. They buy real estate. They don't like handing their money off to somebody, uh, you know, a wealth manager or a stockbroker, any, anyone like that. And, it, and a lot of times this is cultural, okay? You see uh, this along cultural lines. It's just a, a philosophy within that culture that uh, we take our money and, and we put it into physical, tangible assets. And, and those folks apply that same reasoning to buying real estate. Another reason that someone may purchase real estate would be a hedge against inflation, okay? Remember that there's going to be more on that later in the show, uh, but these are folks that have a uh, an existing net wealth, right, or a net worth, and they say, "Hey, uh, we are in an inflationary period, and this net worth, these dollars, continue to be worth less each and every year. So I'm going to protect against that, and I'm going to protect my net worth, and I'm going to put it into a tangible asset like real estate." There's another group of people out there that have learned over time, and, and I didn't even know this until I joined Lifestyles Unlimited, believe it or not, but uh, they have learned that 70% of all millionaires, yes, 70% of all millionaires were created through real estate ownership. I bet many of you might not have known that. And so someone comes across that and they go, wow, if that's how millionaires are made, then I need to buy some real estate. I need to become a real estate uh, investor. I need to become a real estate owner. Uh, I did not even know that uh, w until I joined Lifestyles Unlimited. And it was told to me at uh, one of our uh, at our two day education seminar uh, that we offer the financial freedom program here. And uh, that was spelled out. And I was like, wow. So I had already started investing in real estate and just kind of uh, it was an affirmation of, of what I was doing was uh, the correct path. Now, why did I 
begin investing in real estate, right? Take all those reasons that I've that I've shared with you. The primary reason I invested in real estate, I was a uh, a corporate guy, right? A lot of people uh, saw my career and they say, "Wow, Mike's got a great job, a great career." And so I was a, a middle manager in corporate America for many many years. Uh, I was a diehard 401k participant, and what happened was. Um, Unfortunately, I started doing some math, right? I started reverse engineering and I started saying, wow, uh, based on this rate, this chunk of money that I'm putting into the 401k is not going to be worth what I needed it to be worth when I turned 60 for my wife and I and my family, because at 60, that's that magical number that we're all taught is, hey, you retire at 60, 65, and then you can finally live the life that uh, no one else lives. You can finally live and do what you want, when you want, where you want. Uh, well, I started doing some math going, wow, well, this is going to be a pretty crummy <laughs> retirement. So uh, I need to do something different. And so that's um, that's when I began investing in real estate. Now, that's not my reason today, obviously. OK, that's that it's changed. But that's what started me on this path. So uh, I do it now. I, I invest in real estate now to continue to grow my net worth. I, I invest in real estate now to add more passive income each and every year uh, to my life. So for me, real estate investing is, is really, it's become a lifelong strategy. I do not see deviating uh, from real estate investing. Uh, in fact, I expect to invest to the end of my days, right? You know, whether that's 100 days or, you know, 50 years, but I will continuously be a, a real estate investor, right? As, as these properties go through their full cycle, uh, I will take the returns from those properties and I will put it into more real estate and more real estate and more real estate. I call I call that the cash flow snowball and I just continue to grow that uh, again each and every year. And, and I started 13 years ago, um, but I started when I started, it was that reasoning because I realized that my 401k, my RA, all that wasn't going to be worth uh, the number I had in mind that I knew that we would need. And it, and it wasn't even wasn't even a huge number, really. It was just a, uh, you know, a nice median. It, it was a number that I pulled out of the air that I said, this is about what we will need to uh, live a dignified, decent retirement, right, without exhausting uh, all of our funds. So uh, that was my reasoning behind it. So stay tuned. We're going to get into five, quote unquote, real estate investing strategies. And I'm going to share the pros and cons with each. You're listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. You allowed 15,000 members into your Thank sandbox. You. Thank yeah. you. And so that speaks volumes. So for that and as a family. So you know why I did that? Everybody what? always asks, why did you do this? Because I was an ugly kid. My parents used to have to put a pork chop around my neck so the dog would play with me. And so I always wanted to have friends, and I figured if I could make people rich, they might be my friend. Join Dell and his successful friends. Start with the free online workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Creating the lifestyle you've always wanted. You're hearing Lifestyles Unlimited's Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mike Harrison. I'm sharing common real estate strategies, not necessarily the methodology that we teach here at Lifestyles Unlimited. We'll get into to some of that, but I'm, I'm sharing this because a lot of folks out there uh, believe that they are indeed investing in real estate uh, by engaging in a couple of these strategies. And I want to go through the pros and, and cons of each and see if we can't boil this down. Or some folks, uh, like my father engaged in, in one of these, and, and he felt like he was essentially a real estate investor uh, in doing this. And, and now that um, I'm a member of Lifestyles Unlimited and have been a, a real estate investor for over 13 years, uh, I could have probably, with the information I have, I could have debated that with my father back in the day and, and maybe challenged him on on some of this. So we'll, we'll get into that. But I think the number one uh, quote unquote real estate strategy out there that that most people are aware of is is the fix and flip right flipping um, what is flipping if this is the first time you you've ever heard that term 
Flipping is where someone goes in and they, and they buy a home, uh, they remodel the home, uh, and maybe add some nice additions or fix it up or change the floor plan. There's different levels that, that can be done in this. Uh, and then they sell the home and they hope that they make a profit in the meantime. So you buy for X, you sink a Y into the remodel, uh, and they sell it for Z. So if, if Z is greater than X and Y, then for them, that's a profit. Um, this has been made very, very popular, obviously, uh, with all the home and garden shows that are out there. Uh, the famous one, right, Chip and Joanna Gaines at a Waco, Texas. Uh, that's probably the most popular. They put this uh, fix and flipping on the map, and there's you know 75 spinoff uh, shows on this. But spoiler alert, I, I just want to say that often folks that face value, they watch these shows and they're like, I can do that. I'd like to do that. And they don't always turn a profit. OK. Uh, and then if you want to do a deep dive into to Chip and Joanna, um, they weren't buying and flipping at all. They had owners that would reach out to them with a budget um, and they would apply that budget to the home. So they weren't even flipping. There's a cost of flipping. You've got to buy the home. And when you buy the home, you have closing cost. You've got to market the home, stage the home. Uh, you've got to sell the home. And when you sell it, guess what? More closing cost. Uh, I would advise if you're selling a property, use a realtor. You should have a great realtor or several great realtors on your team and ding ding realtors cost money right they make a commission so there's even more cost um there's another one of these famous shows it was a husband and wife i believe they were out in uh california and they've since uh split off uh from one another but they would show that one show uh they'd show the one house for the hour and they buy it and they they do all this stuff uh, truth be told, um, this guy is actually doing about 50 of those at the same time, okay? He had an entire team, an entire organization that was doing this. But the viewer just sees that one, and they go, oh, I could do this, and, the, and they see the, the profit from it. So, uh, And also, spoiler alert, many of these flipper shows on TV, the people are making money from the show okay they're making money by being on the show they're getting paid to do the show uh, the commercials that run during the show they're not necessarily making money on the flip so a lot of folks that, that get into this and uh, they may not have realized what all is involved they just go oh that looks fun i've got some free time uh, i'd like to do it now i'm not disparaging flippers okay there's a lot of people out there that do this they enjoy it and they do fine but what I do want to share is what really is involved. So let's go through the pros, okay? What, what could be a pro of flipping? Well, I'm sure it's fun, people that do it, uh, the thrill of the chase, right? Uh, going out and finding the property and, and have, putting that plan in place. Um, the satisfaction of making something better. I get that same satisfaction with my rental properties. I make it best product, best price. I rent it to a great resident. Uh, that gives me a good feeling. Um, I would uh, figure that people that do this flipping, they enjoy designing, right? The interiors and the exteriors. And then obviously the pro, the reason for doing it is the opportunity for profit. Now, let's go into the cons, okay? The rehab may cost much more than estimated. It may last longer than estimated. Um, what kind of lending uh, is involved? What kind of finances? Are they paying cash? I think most people would think, oh, you have to pay cash when you go into this. And then if you pay cash, then you're obviously having to pay for the house. You're having to pay the closing costs. You're having to pay the rehab. Come out of pocket. Um, I've never seen one of these fix and flip shows where they talk about hard money. Hard money is a strategy I use on my rental properties. It's a strategy we teach here at Lifestyles Unlimited. It's very advantageous uh, form of lending. These flippers, um, there's daily interaction, daily supervision on the project. Uh, you've got two closing costs, right? The closing costs when you buy, the closing costs when you sell. Uh, by the way, if you're a flipper, you're not making any money during that entire process. There's no income coming in at all. Uh, realtors fees, like I mentioned, uh, especially on the sale. Uh, marketing, staging, right that you've got to stage this you're bringing in uh, all this furniture people watch these shows and i don't think they realize that most of the time 
all that, uh, all the knickknacks and the copper pans hanging in the background and the cool sofas and the cool bedroom uh, sets, that doesn't always go with the house. The, the people buying it would have to buy all that. That's all stage that's there for you as a viewer if you're a flipper chances are you're also having to stage the property now appraisal let's talk about appraisal for a minute you've bought the house for x you've sunk y into the rehab and if it doesn't carry that appraisal uh the 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 buyer is going to send an appraiser in and let's say you bought the home for 200 you put 65 into the rehab and you're trying to sell it for 300 what if the appraiser comes out and says hey buddy this is worth 265 okay i can see where novice flippers uh, will overdo the rehab they'll blow past the value um, I've, I've got i've got some news for you a property if everything in the neighborhood in uh, property value is based on the neighborhood if everything in the neighborhood is priced at 140 a square foot you're going to struggle selling more than 140. i'm not saying you can't get 150 but to get $200 a square foot. So uh, it's it's going to be difficult. A smart uh, buyer does, does not want the most expensive home in the neighborhood. A smart buyer, like we teach here at Lifestyles Unlimited, like us, we want, we want to buy that property for less per square foot, right? We want uh, the best property, but we also want uh, that property to be much less than the other properties. That's where our profit is. So if you've got one of these novice flipper and they put too much into it and they're trying to ask too much when they sell, that home's going to stay on the market for quite a while. And again, uh, you're not making any money during that process. That's really a job. I don't consider that real estate investing. The next one out there, vacation rentals. Many people start out this way. Um, so what are the pros of vacation rentals? I think people that um, are into this uh, a guy I worked with bought a couple of condos. Uh, he 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 likes it. This is what he does. He he wasn't interested in in what I do uh, at all. And really, he's banking on the long term appreciation. But he's got he's got to deal with all the marketing websites uh, that that market these properties. Uh, he's got to handle that. He's got to make sure it's up to speed. So I guess those would be the pros of it. The cons, uh, honestly, I think it's very risky. If this is your sole Real estate investing, um, the income can be fickle. Uh, it can be very tedious, depending on how involved you are, right? An another con, I believe, of the vacation rental, I don't think there's much in regard to screening. What kind of people are there that are, that are coming in? Or, or maybe you can't even do the screening. I, I think uh, the biggest screening really is do they have a credit card that works, right? But you're not doing a background check or, or any of that sort of thing. All right, let's talk about another strategy, commonly called crowdfunding okay we don't use that term here at lifestyles unlimited but uh, we call that syndications i do this we teach this here at lifestyles unlimited like i said we don't call it crowdfunding but we definitely as passive investors pool our money together and buy large or small multifamily properties so the pros 100 percent passive i don't do anything i evaluate the deal hand my money over and invest in the property and then essentially collect mailbox money. So I don't engage in the property in any way. That is definitely a pro. Uh, there's an easy entry point, right? You can invest in syndications uh, for as little as $25,000, all right? And you're actually a part owner of the property, or part owner of the LLC that owns the property. Um, and that's based on the investment ratio to the property uh, value, right? So personally, I, my personal ownership in, in many of these properties is, uh, I'm a, I own as much as 4% in one property, um, uh, down to less than 1% in some properties and, and everything in between. Another pro, uh, you can diversify, uh, across several different property types, several locations. Uh, I've got, uh, investments that I'm involved in, uh, in four different states. Okay. They don't have to be next door so you can spread this uh, you can spread it out to your passive investing so that is definitely a pro uh, the cons what would the downside be you need to do your research and you need to be educated that's not a con to me but somebody again layman looking at it from the outside um, this is not something that you just want to jump willy-nilly into it you need to be able to to read a business plan you need to understand the financing uh, I recommend you get to know the lead person 
uh, and know that person well, have a relationship with that person. You need to understand the fee structure. Uh, you need to understand uh, what's involved, what's going to make this property work, right? This is a business. Uh, another con, um, it's not very liquid. You're putting your money in this property. There's a business plan associated with it. Uh, some of the, I've had some sell as, as soon as after just over a year of ownership, and I'm involved in some that were going uh, seven, eight years on it, but that was, that was always part of the plan. So someone from the outside may say, well, that's not very liquid. Well, no, it's not, but it's a great way to invest, right? I, I didn't have a need for that money anyway. I, I wanted to put that money into a, a property and, and get the returns based on that property, all right? The money will come back. It'll come full circle. What is another quote-unquote common real estate investing strategy. Uh, this is one that my, my father engaged in. This is the famous REIT, right? R-E-I-T. That is a real estate investment trust. I don't invest in REITs, okay? Really, for me, a REIT is, it's nothing more than uh, people with that invest in that, they go, oh, you need to get diversified out of the stock market. You should buy, you should buy some REITs. Um, I can argue that really you're not a real estate owner okay um, you're you're buying a share of a company that then buys and owns property okay and the whole idea is to generate income uh, that company generates income uh, but you own the stock and the shares of the company that buy the property you're really not owning a property okay um, REITs are going to go up and down just like the stock market uh, there's different types of of REITs out there uh, but my opinion is, you know, uh, it, some of the REITs actually own the properties and some uh, own the liquidity to buy the properties, right? So if you're going to do that, you might as well buy a, a bank stock, in, in my opinion. Uh, and then there, so that there's an equity REIT and there's a mortgage REIT and then there's hybrid REITs. So pros, uh, I would say it's easy, okay? Your stock market, your stock broker can put you in a REIT immediately, um, but if you're not really a real, real estate investor and you don't want to be, uh, I think people from the outside consider, you know, the REITs giving them some of that exposure to real estate investing. My thought is, is why not just buy a property and actually be a real estate investor? So what are the cons of a REIT? Uh, I think uh, only people that really are stock market types um, are the ones that believe owning a REIT is like owning real estate. It's not when you look at it. Uh, it's really just a play on the real estate market going up or down. Uh, I would tell you there's a lot of REITs out there that some folks are going to get burned. They have heavy commercial uh, exposure. Some of these REITs bought these properties um, in, in areas where all the workers now don't want to go back to work. And, and there's a big uh, commercial, uh, there's a lot of commercial real estate that's going to reset uh, as a result. And, and those are primarily, a lot of them are owned by REITs. So REITs uh, and that's another con. They can buy whatever type of, of real estate uh, they want. Uh, another con, you have zero control, okay? You're handing basically money over to a broker that's going to buy this REIT on your behalf, right? And it's going to put you in this, in this REIT, and you've got no control over what they're buying. You've got no control over the management of the property. You've got no control whatsoever. So uh, I'm in passive deals and I have no control. I like that. Uh, but in a REIT, you darn sure uh, don't have any control. And another con is uh, uh, your gains are going to be taxed, right? It's going to be taxed just like uh, owning, uh, just, you know, just like owning a stock. It's going to be taxed in that, that same manner. Now, the last investing strategy, single family rental properties. I do this. Single family real estate, it's solid, it's safe. Um, the investor does need to be educated and have have a plan. But uh, other than owning multifamily, this is what I do. Single family properties. I love it. It's what we teach here at Lifestyles Unlimited. The pros, ease of entry can be done. You can get single family rental properties for little to no out of pocket. Uh, another pro is that uh, real estate is very, very forgiving. Um, even people that don't know what they're doing. Like my first property, I still made a 9% return, okay? Once I learned how to do it well, uh, I made triple-digit returns in that, in that first year of owning properties on many, many properties. You make money five different ways. You can self-manage those single-family properties. You can get immediate cash flow. 
Uh, the financing is great, uh, conventional lending on these properties, so uh, really the most advantageous true real estate investing is single family properties. My name is Mike Harrison. I want you to remember, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.